It is E3 2017 and we are taking a look at a game called Where the Water Tastes Like Wine. I'm here with Yanamin. What, what is this game about? Yeah, so this is a game about uh, traveling and telling stories. You kind of wander the Great Depression era United States uh, having these little adventures uh, and you get stories out of them. Take these stories and you can trade them basically with uh, characters that you meet uh, to get details about their life. So. Um, it's a narrative game, but unlike other narrative games where you have one kind of central story, we instead have these 16 different characters, and each one of them was written by a different person. So oh, really it's cool. sort of like a collection of short stories in video game form. And you might recognize uh, some of the names of people who write for us. We have people like Austin Walker, Lee Alexander, Kara Ellison, Emily Short, some really fantastic writers writing our characters for us. That's really cool. So do you... So do you play as multiple characters then, or do you play as this character and then you find these stories throughout the world? That's right, yeah. You're not playing as any of these characters. You are um, this character here, wandering the world, finding these stories, and kind of uh, kind of getting the stories of these other characters. The, the overall story here is that you played a game of poker with the wrong person and you lost. And that's why you're cursed to wander the United States, collecting these stories and helping them, helping them grow. You're sort of like the, the personification of folklore, the Johnny Appleseed of folk tales, let's say. Okay. One thing that immediately stood out is the music. Um, do you mind talking about that a little bit? Yeah, of course. The music is one of the big inspirations behind this game, actually. Um, this all draws from a bunch of uh, American roots music, things like blues, bluegrass, folk, you know, things like that. Um, and uh, the world that we're trying to draw here in the Great Depression is comes a lot from those those songs, right? Uh, sort of the the world of out of luck gamblers, uh, you know, uh, coal miners uh, yeah. selling your soul to the devil at the crossroads, stuff like that. Yeah. I I love blues, I love all that kind of music, so that was the first thing. I, right when I started up, I was like, all right, maybe I'll just not even play and just listen to this for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we also, um, so we have, like I said, there's a bunch of different characters. Each of the characters has their own, uh, own music that goes with them. We also have one kind of overall song that changes its character based on uh, where you are in the U.S. Okay. So in the Northeast, it'll be kind of like an Appalachian bluegrass sort of thing. Uh, as you go to the South, it'll get more bluesy, uh, more like a folk song in the Midwest, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, this is basically, you're wandering around the United States. Yes, this is the entire United States, uh, or the entire contiguous United States, at least, from, you know, you can walk from yeah. Maine to Los Angeles if you want to. Uh, this demo takes place in, in the area in the south. It's mostly Alabama. Um, you can see Nashville kind of in the distance there. Uh, so we're about to walk into Tennessee here. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the whole United States will be in the, in, is in the final game. Is there something guiding you from place to place, or is it just player exploration, player freedom, you stumble across these stories. As right, you, you mostly stumble across them. Um, when I go and talk to one of these characters uh, and I tell them stories and things like that, at the end of the conversation, they'll often tell me where they're going to be next. So that can lead me, if I want to try and follow their story, then that can lead me kind of onwards uh, through, the, through the country. And uh, each of these characters has multiple chapters of, uh, of story going on. So when I meet one, um, even if I get to the next chapter of their story, I'll still want to track them down and, and see that, that sort of content. And the way that works is that, um, as you see here, I'm talking to Althea, the blues singer who's sold her soul to the devil to be the best in the world. Um, Happens to all of us sometimes. Uh, right, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> sometimes you need to do that. Um, Althea was written by Gita Jackson, and Gita did an amazing job. She kind of turned this into uh, a story more about the lack of power that a, a black woman might have in mm -hmm. the South in this time and, and what she'd be willing to do to kind of try and get out of that um, and, and the systems of oppression that exist around that. Um, so here I am in the, I'm, I'm just skipping through the tutorial here, but um, here I am in the storytelling mode. Um, and I can see that she asks me for, uh, for a hopeful story is the first kind she wanted. Um, if I tell her the right kind of story, um, then I'll kind of gain her trust a little bit, right? Um, and that's how I, I progress through, through her chapters. If I gain her trust enough, the next time I meet her, uh, I'll see the next chapter of her story. Okay. And another part of this game is that when you when you kind of achieve the final chapter of someone's story you also gain their trust enough that you can see their true inner self that's another part of your kind of supernatural abilities that were granted to you as part of this curse 
Um, so that's the that's the goal here is to find all these different characters uh, and and see that that sort of transformation take place in them. So I'm curious, what is the workflow like when you have 16 different authors? Kind of, are they kind of in their own bubble writing their story, or do you have them interact? And then once that story is written, uh, do do they help from there, or is it basically on you guys where you just integrate the story into? Yeah, so it's basically all the all the writers are individual. The stories don't tie together at all, um, okay. except for the fact that they all share a, kind of a common theme yeah. um, based around the name of the game, which is uh, where the water tastes like wine. That kind of refers to this idea that somewhere out there, there's a place you can go where all the living is easy and everything is great, right? Yeah. Uh, sort of promised land, big rock count, candy mountain uh, sort of idea. Um, but of course, that that doesn't really exist, and all these characters have stories that are about the the failure of the American dream to live up to its promises in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, so working with the authors, um, basically, uh, what I did was I did a lot of research about these characters. A lot of them are are historically based. You know, they have uh, antecedents in in history, and so I did a lot of research around those those people, those characters. I assembled some some information and sent that on to the writers. They took that and they turned that into real people. You know, these are these are sympathetic characters that you can interact with, talk with. They have backgrounds. They have people that they know and love. They have families, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then we take those stories and integrate them into the game. And then we've also talked to the authors to figure out, you know, oh, what do you think that these characters should look like, for example, things like that. That's really fascinating. I feel like I've, I mean, I guess a lot of games are written by a lot of people, but it's all it seems very focused like they're all working together but this seems seems like you you'll have a very diverse set of stories characters uh yeah that's the idea is you know we really wanted to make something where uh each character has their own particular um voice to them you know that they they have yeah uh they they sound unique they sound like a like a real person and it sounds like a character like this, uh, like not everyone can write a character like that. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's true. So I knew that I wasn't the the right person. I could do all this research and everything like that, but I wasn't the right person to, to write all these different characters. You know, we have like uh, uh, sharecroppers, uh, black sharecroppers who are struggling during Reconstruction, right? We have uh, a Navajo woman who uh, was in the long walk of the Navajo, um, coal miners fighting in the... the uh, mine strikes of the the early 20th century and I don't have the background to write all those characters um, yeah. so I went looking for people who who might have more to say about that than I do yeah it's interesting because too I mean this is a part in history that I think a lot of people know about but it's something that it it's it's, it's a complex time in history and I think it's cool to be able to tackle it with yeah, something like this. Absolutely. And you know, like I, I felt the same way that I was like, oh, I know about the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. I studied yeah. that stuff in school. And then when you start reading uh, more about all these different eras of history, you realize that there's so much more out there that, yeah. that you never, you've never you never encountered. It's not just the, the, the president at the time or the war going on. It's like the people are actually struggling or they're dealing with hardships. Right, exactly. It's not, I mean, like Assassin's Creed, for example, like always takes place in different times of history, but it seems very much like what you read in a textbook. Yeah. Well, this is kind of getting into the more yeah. personal side of it. That's what we're trying to do is we're trying to have really personal stories. Uh, this is an interesting encounter that we're in here. Um, what's happened here is that uh, because I told a story to that, that character that we, we met before, um, that story has kind of gotten told to other people and passed around and everyone has maybe added their own little embellishment to it the way that you know folk tales work in, in okay. real life and so here I am hearing this story come back from this person and it's kind of grown it's turned weirder and, and wilder and uh, so that's the way that my my inventory of stories kind of levels up and uh, so the more you use your stories the uh, the better they get the more effective stories okay. you have um, you may not be able to answer this, but so it looks like we are a skeleton. Um, <laughs> did did we die? So or is uh, this? Are you kind of like a ghost sort of? There's a there's there's no clear answer to that exactly, um, but it has something to do with the f the 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 transition that took place when you became this kind of supernatural entity, right? When okay. when you lost the game of cards, uh, here you are transformed into this being that you know you have some kind of immortality and you have some other interesting powers and part of that is is, is you you have the skeleton uh, another reason for it is that um, 
this hopefully allows any player to play this and feel like uh, this could be them uh, yeah. because you know it doesn't have race, age, gender, any of those things going on. I'm gonna walk up here and show a little bit. Uh, I talked about uh, the we've got different regions of the country, and they all have their own music. They all have their own kind of color palette. They all have their own characters you can meet, and um, the their own stories that you can collect. So here I am in just a tiny little bit of the Midwest. I think we, if we can see, no, we can't see any cities up there. But yeah, this is this is the part of the country we're in. Uh, leaving the South, going to the Midwest. Cool. Um, so when can people expect to play this? Um, w this will be out either later this year or early next year. Um, it'll be coming to Steam first, and then we're going to do consoles after that, and potentially even a mobile version for tablets. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, not really. If people want to see more about this, screenshots, things like that, you can go to wherethewatertastelikewine.com. Uh, you can follow us and follow development on Twitter at, at DimbulbGames. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for having us. Thank you. And for more E3 coverage, make sure to stay tuned to GameSpot. We have more videos like this. We've got all the biggest announcements and all of the coolest little indie games. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.